I'm 10 years old. I'm in bed. It's the middle of the night. And I hear some howling outside. Something wakes me up. There's a commotion. Woo! Woo! Kiss my ass, coyote! And I wake up and I hear this. And it's not uncommon to hear noises in the night on Jackson Avenue in my town, especially after the bar is closed. So, but this night, I, I knew who this was because I recognized that voice because there was a river that ran through my town and there were a lot of colorful characters named after fish. And my parents had just gotten divorced and we got kicked out of the Catholic school and my dad moved to the north side in a big house. So my mom stayed on the west end and she doubled down and she married the kingfish. And I was in bed, I didn't even wanna get out of bed, but I would start drifting off and then I would hear it again. Woo! Woo! I looked outside my window and I could see the kingfish out there on the street. And he looked like he was having a really good time. He was pacing back and forth and looking up into the sky and he kept yelling, Kiss my ass, coyote! And I, it had been a, actually a, quite a long time since the kingfish had howled. And he hadn't been in a howling mood lately <laughs> because his trouble started a couple of months earlier. And it actually started right outside my window in the front street. And it was another night where I was asleep and underneath my warm Indian blanket and I heard a commotion outside, and it sounded like two guys were fighting. They were just about ready to start throwing blows. They were yelling at each other. I didn't even want to get out of bed because it was cold. But I decided, I got up, you know, I got up out of the window, and looked out the window, and I could see Diamond Jack and Big Earl out in the street in front of my neighbor's house. And apparently, they were both dating the same woman who lived next to me. Her name was Sharon. And it seemed to be going pretty well for Sharon um, until they both showed up at the same time. And Diamond Jack was a Golden Gloves boxer. And he was the key, he was like the king of the ladies, cock of the walk. He was, um, he was the head road dog on the West End. And the kingfish was part of that group, the road dogs. They traveled around from bar to bar. You know, they never really started a fight, but trouble always seemed to find them. Um, I looked outside, and I could see that I, I just knew Diamond Jack was going to take this guy down pretty good, even though Big Earl was pretty tall. Diamond Jack was just kind of batting him around a little bit, and then he just knocked him clear out. And then I, I kept watching, and then Diamond Jack just grabbed his head and started bashing it against the curb. And it was super violent. And, but nothing compared to what was going to happen in, on the following weekend. St. Patrick's Night. Um, I was having a sleepover actually at Sharon's house with all of her kids. Her mom, or their, Sharon had went down to the bar with uh, Diamond Jack, and um, there was going to be trouble down there because uh, Big Earl would go down there, and Diamond Jack was going to be down there. And these guys did not have to go down to the bar, but the alley behind the bar was just calling them. And they, you know, when I stayed overnight at Sharon's house, and, and uh, Diamond Jack would spend the night there, we weren't even allowed to get out of bed until 10 a.m. We couldn't make any noises at all because Diamond Jack was there sleeping, and if you woke him up, there was going to be hell to pay. So we are having a sleepover, and it was like the last night on earth for us. We, the parents were gone. It was like Lord of the Flies. And the older kids, they started searching around through uh, Sharon's room looking for her stash, the younger kids 
We started looking for food, and then it just all hell broke loose. We were jumping on the beds, and we piled up all the pillows at the bottom of the steps, and we dove off the top of the steps. It was literally like the last night on earth. And then, you know, down at the bar, there was trouble brewing. The kingfish was in the bar next to Diamond Jack, and Big Earl's little brother ran over. He said, there's trouble outside. You got to get out there right away. So the kingfish went out there, and uh, Diamond Jack and Big Earl were fighting. They were just like, you know, face to face, chest to chest. They were arguing. There was a little crowd around there. And the kingfish decided, you know, the kingfish was actually a really great guy. He had a heart of gold. And all he wanted to really do was break up this fight. So he stepped in between them, and he, he put his hands in between them, and he tried to break it up. The next thing you know, flashes were going off. There were explosions. A gun was being fired. Um, bullets were flying by the kingfish's head. They probably served as reminders for him. Of why the hell was he even out there that night? You know, Psh, I should be home with my wife. She's pregnant. I got a new wife. I'm turning over a new leaf. Psh, I got four kids at home now. Psh, rich man, poor man's on. I could stay home and watch that tonight. <laughs> When the bullets were flying, the kingfish decided he should get out of there, so he ran back into the bar. And then when he came back out, Diamond Jack was laying on the ground, and he was bleeding. And, and the kingfish, it was kind of a cold night. The kingfish had on his big suede jacket, brown with tassels hanging. He looked like Easy Rider. And he went over there, and he, he knew that Diamond Jack, his one of his best friends was a goner. He was just bleeding out right there in the alley. So he took, his, he took off his leather suede jacket and he laid it over him. And Big Earl, a couple of people said they saw Big Earl run down to the river and throw the gun in the river. And Big Earl's family, they lived on the north side they played bridge with Judge Willie. His parents did. So when Diamond Jack got put in jail, he got a TV in his cell. And the trial was coming, and this was big. This was the biggest thing to ever happen to our town. On the first day of the trial, in the courtroom, Everyone was in there. It was completely packed. People were spilling out in the hallways. Outside on the lawn of the courthouse, people had spread blankets out, and they were sitting out there. Everyone from the West End was finally going to find out if there was going to be justice served because one of their own, Road Dog, Diamond Jack, got shot down by a Northsider. Um, when Judge Willie walked in, he got up and he addressed everyone in the courtroom. Kingfish was there. My mom was there. Lots of people from the West End were there. Judge Willie, he got up and he said, I don't want you to be alarmed. You're going to hear some dark testimony, some dark stories. Don't be alarmed. It's just the way they live. the way they live, the way I live, I guess, he meant, everyone on the West End. It's just the way they live. Right about that time, it was like a dark cloud settled over the courthouse. The kingfish and my mom, they knew right away this was not going good. And that dark cloud rolled over the courtroom in the courthouse, in the hallway. And it, after that first day in the trial, it followed my parents home. And it was really tough for them. Um, the main eyewitness was the kingfish. And the kingfish, he did have a heart of gold. He was, a, he was great. He, if you needed money, He'd give it to you. If you 
if your old lady kicked you out of the house, you could come stay on his couch. If your car was broke down, he'd give you his car. He was nice to animals. He wasn't a racist. He's a great guy. The jury didn't buy it. They didn't, they didn't believe him. And Big Earl got released. Free. He got off. They never found the gun. And when it was over, the kingfish, he went to the police to get protection because he said that Big Earl was driving up and down the street on Jackson Avenue, parking his car in front of his house late at night. And the police just laughed at him, I think. They just didn't take him serious at all. Now, with Diamond Jack gone, it created a vacuum. And the kingfish was a natural to fill that void as top road dog. And it was the start of a new era for the kingfish. And he, he took on that spot, but not for long. Because this opportunity, it just came at the wrong time for the kingfish. He just got married. He's going to have a baby. He's got four new kids. And he wanted to turn his life around and start a new leaf, or turn over a new leaf. And when the, it, it lasted like maybe three weeks or so. Um, and he decided he was going to go a different path. He was going to settle down, you know, take care of his family. He didn't want his kids to grow up to be road dogs. So he started a whole new life. So anyway, that first night, you know, so there he was out in the street, you know, howling. He was back. Woo! Woo! Kiss my ass, coyote! He was back. And he, he went a different route. And, but... I always think of this parallel universe where the kingfish became top road dog. He stayed in that spot. He kept running with the other road dogs. Hubbard, Honey Bear Hayes from Chicago, my uncle Richie Boyd, and the instigator, Wilson. Um, they would travel around from bars to bars, and they would go in wearing their leather jackets and their long hair and their beards and their biker boots. And they would walk into a bar out in the middle of nowhere, cornfields on all sides, and some redneck would start fat-mouthing them. And then there would be a fight. And then those guys would have to, those rednecks would have to pay the, once they started that. And then there would just be, all hell would break loose. There would be a huge fight. And, you know, the road dogs knew the heat was going to come down. So they would always leave right before the cops got there. They'd run out the front door. There'd be the kingfish, honey bear, Wilson. My uncle Richie would be running. He had one, head, one hand on his toupee and another hand on a suitcase that was full of watches and prescription pills that he was trying to fence from some robbery in Chicago. And... But that, that, that wasn't going to be the case. The kingfish, you know, he, he was going to start over. And, you know, to me, the kingfish is always going to be out there. He's just like, you know, it's like this parallel universe where I picture the kingfish and all his boys out there cruising around. And, but, you know, the last time I saw the kingfish was about four months ago. And he was on the beach in front of his house. And he built a hugely successful business in another state. He had to get out of town. He couldn't really get a job there. Nobody would hire him. You couldn't just walk into the supermarket and be the kingfish and get a job or something. The last time I saw the kingfish, he was, on, he was in a souped-up golf cart. Yellow stripes down the side. My mom was riding shotgun. And he's 
driving down the beach as fast as that golf cart can go. And out, his, out the window of the golf cart, he's got a leash and a Doberman. And the Doberman is just running alongside him, and they are cruising down the beach. That is the world that they live in. But I talked to the kingfish this morning, actually, and um, I told him that I was going to come and talk about him. And uh, he, he just really loves to hear that I'm telling these stories for him. <laughs> and the kingfish wanted me to say hi <laughs> to Rocky, who I did not think was going to be here. The kingfish loves Manitou Springs, actually, and he... This was one of his favorite towns to visit, and he loved all Rocky's art, and he wanted me to tell all of you that he said hi. <laughs> Thank you.